Here are the actions President Joe Biden took in his first day in office. Then a major closure on Bangor Highway had to get around Riverton for the next seven months. And then COVID-19 vaccine sitting on Utah shelves now for more than a week. Here how many aren't being used in a live report. Plus, Aaron Bryan, I am tracking a pretty nice Thursday in the forecast, but active weather, a big weather pattern change by this weekend. You're watching GMU at 5 a.m. Live from Utah's first TV station, Good Morning Utah at 5 starts now. Good morning, Utah. I'm Sarah Martin. And I'm Brian Carlson. The time is 5 o'clock on this Thursday. America is waking up this morning to a new president. Today, President Joe Biden is his first full day in office, and he's already busy at work. President Biden is laying out a vision to bring the country together after a divisive election. He wants to focus on unity. We must end this uncivil war that pits red against blue, rural versus urban, or, or rural versus urban, conservative versus liberal. We can do this if we open our souls instead of hardening our hearts. Kamala Harris is the first woman, first black American and person of Asian descent to be sworn in as vice president, taking her oath of office from the first Latina on the U.S. Supreme Court, Justice Sonia Sotomayor. On the president's first day in office, he had a long list of executive orders and challenges, some that tackle COVID-19. Here in Utah, those orders come at a critical time. Our Utah public health order on COVID-19 expires today. ABC4's Jared Jatnini live in downtown Salt Lake City with how the president's executive orders could impact our local response. Jared. Sarah, well, now masks are required at federal buildings like the Wallace Federal Building here in downtown Salt Lake. The president signing an executive mask mandate. He can't require states and cities to follow suit, but the mask mandate does impact all federal property. Now, one of the first of 15 total executive orders signed by the president was one calling on the nation to wear a mask for 100 days and requiring their use on all federal property and about face from the former Trump administration. The president is calling on governors, public health officials, mayors to implement masking, physical distancing and other measures to help control the spread of COVID-19. Some of the executive actions I'm going to be signing today are going to help change the course of the COVID crisis. Spencer Cox signed an executive order to speed up vaccine distribution, mandating that doses should be administered within seven days. But the Utah Department of Health says uh, that 32,000 of the state's 220,000 doses are sitting on the shelves for longer than a week, which violates the order. The health department says the challenge is administering vaccines in long term care facilities. Now, again, uh, that Utah, our, our state public health order expires today, which tightens restrictions for uh, school sports and uh, bars and restaurants. No word if that'll be extended, but, uh, you know, the president now calling on governors and other public health officials to tighten restrictions. So we'll just have to see what Governor Cox decides. Reporting live, Jared Jot and any ABC4 News. All right, thank you, Jared. Happening today, Governor Spencer Cox will update us on some of Utah's most pressing issues. The governor is holding his monthly news conference this morning at 1030. We'll cover it live both on air and online at ABC4.com. Also today, Governor Cox's first state of the state. That annual speech is an opportunity for the governor to take a broad look at how our state is doing and set goals for the future. Tonight's address will be streamed on Governor Cox's Facebook page at 630. We'll have full coverage tonight on ABC4 and ABC4.com. And the governor may address one of the President Biden's new executive orders affecting one of Utah's controversial national monuments. Yesterday, President Biden signed an executive order to review the boundaries of the Bears Ears and Grand Staircase Escalante monuments in southern Utah. Two years ago, President Trump downsized the two monuments and then last year implemented a new management plan. At the time, conservation groups called the downsizing the largest elimination of protected land in U.S. history. Another presidential item on day one, Biden requested the Department of Education to extend the pause on student loan payments until October. The previous extension was set to expire at the end of January. The president has asked to keep interest rates at 0% through that extension. He said he plans to ease student loans by proposing a forgiveness of at least $10,000 for all federal borrowers. More on the president's first day in office and his goals for the first 100 days on Aaron online at ABC4.com. 
Good Thursday morning. A live look outside. Conditions are quiet across downtown Salt Lake City. A nice start to your 